Hi, and welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast, where we talk about all things flute. If you're looking for more tips or lessons with, from Emily, please check out Musigy.com for all the sheet music, transcriptions, albums, books, and flute lesson packages. That's Musigy.com. M-U-S-O-G-Y.com. Also, if you're looking for posters, fingering charts, or merch, you can head over at our merch store at store.thefluechannel.com for all your flute needs. If you want to help us on a monthly basis, you can also consider joining us over at Patreon for as little as $2 a month. This helps us make more great content for you. Check the description for more info. Now on with the show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Emily. Hi, Emily. And this is Misty. <laughs> this is Misty as well. It's true. If you're watching Misty this live right now, but if you're uh, listening to the podcast, uh, Misty's joining us uh, for the podcast. Uh, this New Year's podcast. Happy New Year, Emily. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody Everyone. out there, too. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit uh, today about... Uh, you know, good practicing habits to uh, start the new year and also a couple of your questions. So if you have any questions, uh, we'll try to reserve at least a couple of minutes at the end of the show to um, answer those as well. So we'll put those in the chat or if you have a question uh, uh, for another podcast, go and leave them uh, in the video uh, over at YouTube.com. So, yeah, um, we're back from uh, our uh, last podcast. We, uh, you guys, oh, well, Emily, you did an interview with the... Uh, with uh, the teacher over at Berkeley. Wendy. With Wendy. Wendy. And that was cool. And then yep. uh, since then, we've been uh, working on finishing the album, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, which is the Telemann solo, uh, 12 Telemann Fantasias for solo flute. Yeah. T- what takes time is the whole book part, because I have to do revisions to make sure that <laughs> there's no mistakes in the music, uh, the sheet music. Yeah, absolutely. The revision and revision on so many things, including the music part, the recording part, yeah. all those things, you know. Yeah. So that should be out very, very, very soon. And you'll you'll all uh, be able to find out more about that over at uh, the YouTube channel. Well, we'll give you all the updates. But uh, yeah, you, you'll be able to go and uh, buy it over at Musigy.com. It's going to be uh, like the sheet music, but also the recordings and together, too. It's going to be a very cool uh, uh beginning product for for albums you know start off big with the telemons and then we're gonna do some more uh, later in the next year as well so stay tuned for that and what else has happened uh not much else which really just uh winding down the new year right yeah uh, or winding down the old year and then new year is gonna start soon so yeah um just want to kind of open up the conversation like we, i told you about uh what are your kind of like good foundational tips for when people uh start you know in general um about practicing in general yeah practicing sorry yeah practicing yeah i guess um trying to find a type of schedule that um you know we're creature of a creatures of habit most of us so if we have a time frame that we put in our schedule that's good for us um that can be helpful because we all have very busy lives absolutely so and also have realistic uh, goals. If you have um, a full time job and three kids, maybe you won't practice two hours a day. Maybe you'll practice three times thirty minutes, and that's already a great achievement. You know, like so that you don't feel always that um, you're not succeeding in your goals. Don't put goals that are completely unrealistic. <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, figuring out a nice spot to uh, put that in, in your schedule. And then remember that it's more about, well, of course, you need a minimum time to get better. But how you practice is at least as important as how much you practice. If you practice mistakes over and over, um, or if you practice with a, with a goal, and if you know, like, Also, you try to get the information. Let's say you're not happy with your sound, maybe trying to figure out why, what's going on, how to make it better, because just practicing, practicing, practicing might not be the most efficient way. Whereas maybe if you uh, go see a teacher or watch a couple of YouTube videos about it and you look at yourself in the mirror and um, try to figure things out, it's not just about punching in, punching out. It's about being mindful and also making... um, 
it I find it um, useful if you make a um, type of program with like a sound exercise and some technique and articulation and a repertoire and some sight reading with uh, studies and stuff like that and you you um, yeah you try to go through different things different aspects if you don't have time to do all those things every time maybe you you schedule it differently but then there's also people who don't need to schedule like that and just play 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 and it's also it's also okay i guess you know no no totally you're absolutely right i like those things so like you know like first you know scheduling you know scheduling your practice sessions is pretty important to start off have a nice solid scheduling and then also keep a room for movement just in case like things change you know like say something comes up and you're like oh i could have i should have practiced but it's something else came up have that openness a little bit to not be too you know because things can happen but, yeah but too yeah disappointed yeah, or yeah yeah never feel like that if you, if you can help it but like schedule it back or you know have that openness so that you have that that freedom it can help even your practicing i think and like even like practicing uh with a goal that's an amazing tip too like that's a having goals for the week or have a longer term goals could be good as yeah. well too. And just have those set up maybe in a little journal or something or Cause like however you way you want, you know, yeah. you can do like a sound exercise. Let's totally, say, totally with just no, um, no intention. You just play. Yeah. And you're not really there. And yeah. You can play a sound exercise with an intention. Totally. Listening to your sound, trying mm -hmm. to, have your body as open and mm -hmm. as uh, relaxed as possible, like relaxed, but also uh, strong in a way. Right. And, um, you know, think about how you're breathing and your embouchure and how you, you're taking the, all the space. Yeah. And you're filling the space with your sound. Oh, yeah. You can do it in that way or you can just play the notes with no intention. Right. You've spent the same amount of time. I guess one will be more satisfying and more uh, useful long term. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I like that that deep analysis during practice now, like talking about the actual practice session right now. Like I like how you're talking about that with the um, playing with the intention and you know doing all that. And I think that you were I think you said just before that too um, is to look at videos, look at references. Uh, look at lessons uh, online and stuff but also i think recording yourself with your phone can also be the one thing like you don't have to do you don't have to record your whole practice session but maybe record one element of your practice session that you kind of want to deep dive in even if it's only a minute even if it's only 30 seconds you can record that review it watch it really spend a couple minutes to analyze like what's going on what you can improve then maybe re-record yeah. it or practice with that intention like you were saying uh, more mindful attention to have a good change to make a better sound or better technique or better whatever you're you can trying be your to do. Best teacher. So if you record you can, yourself totally. and you listen, yeah. you can really, it's not the same while you're playing. When you're just listening, you can take notes. Good point. And also take notes of what's going on well. Mm -hmm. If you think something's very nice, yeah. you should also take note of that because yeah. it's as important to know what you're doing right so you yeah. can continue to do that. Yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, reinforce it. Yeah, I see. Which yeah, it's as important to work repetition. To see what's going well as to see what needs to get better. Yeah. And um, like even yeah, like yeah, yeah. I think like even if the sound quality is not the best, you still can learn a lot from recording yourself. I guess now even filming yourself to see your posture. Like I wasn't doing that when I was younger because we didn't have phones like that. Mm -hmm. It was more complicated. But I guess it could be a good. You know, if your teacher is always telling you or you don't have a teacher, but let's say your teacher is always telling you that you're uh, going forward all the time. If you don't see it, it's difficult oh, yeah. to correct yourself. You have to see it, feel it and be like, oh, OK. So, yeah, stuff like that. But I remember totally. like practicing piano, for example, for hours and not being able to play something. And then I started watching uh you know, reading more about piano technique and stuff like that, and stuff that I had never learned in my le piano lessons, just, you know. It's yeah. And, like, it opened something up for me, and then I was able to mm -hmm. actually play it. And I think I could have practiced almost unlimited an unlimited amount of hours. Totally. Um, and not being able to play it, you know. Exactly. Same with my flute sound at one point. I, I 
learned more about how things are made, how mm-hmm. things are produced, how the sound is produced, if mm-hmm. you're playing loud or mm-hmm. soft and all those things. And like, yeah, I could have practiced so much without attaining the same result if uh. I hadn't understood how how it works so totally it's also a good investment sometimes to watch videos maybe one day you're too tired to take out your flute yep but you have you're using that same time to watch a video about sound production and you're still working those parts of the brain yeah still without even your flute a lot or of people one are day gonna, yeah you uh you say oh let's when i'm uh when i'm uh commuting i have time to read my music let's mm-hmm. say i'm learning mm-hmm. a study every week yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I can't take out my flute, but I can still take out my music yeah. and read my music. And I, I always do my fingerings like this. Yeah, yeah. But you can also just read it and start learning it, understanding the rhythm. Yeah. Uh, you know. And listening to recordings as well. Yeah, or at l- your lunchtime, you yeah. can listen to the piece you're playing and totally look at the music. Look at so. That's all. There's yeah. ways to be efficient huh. too, and. And um, not just with the flute, but that mm-hmm. or with whatever instrument you're playing, but uh, that are gonna help your playing. Yeah. You know, even like you said, listening to good musicians mm-hmm. can teach you a lot about a lot about phrasing. Totally. Like, and also if you're, let's say your goal is okay, I want to get my phrasing better. Mm-hmm. Then you listen to musicians with that, that in mind. Oh, how do they phrase? You know, yeah. how do they make the phrase move forward and and clothes and all that stuff yeah hmm yeah that's all like really good ways to to do mindful intentional practice or mindful intentional repetition you know listening to something practicing something over but having that analytical uh mindfulness and intention is super important i would think like well i don't know how you would think about this but like i know we can't do in a practice session completely always mindful intuition you know mindful intention and stuff like recording ourselves for every single aspect would you say like take one aspect per uh practice session to do a little bit more fine tuning on something and then go back to your regular uh practice yeah and even sometimes one goal can be for a whole month or a whole year you know sometimes if you're working on something very difficult it might take more time and it's totally. fine uh-huh. and also like you're so right like you can't be let's say you practice three hours a day because everyone's different if you're in university learning like you yeah, might yeah. practice three hours a totally. day um maybe you can't be 100 percent focused three hours a day and it's yeah, also exactly. okay sometimes you're practicing your skills you already know them so well you can just go blah, 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 oh, yeah. and it's it's fine you know it's uh eh, there's no shame there <laughs> you know but also don't practice too much at once make sure you take um make sure you take breaks for yeah, your exactly. body and for your focus and all that you need breaks go and move around cuz static positions also uh it's always tough for the body oh you know, static keep positions a static oh yeah position for a long long time cuz the flute we could even talk a lot about that. Posture, <laughs> even if you have a good posture, you're mm-hmm. still having your head tilted a little bit and all that. You need to take breaks. Exactly. Breaks are super important. Also, rest is very good. Sleep is about, I would well, we've talked about that so long ago, but like s- good sleep can help your practice session like considerably. Some I think they did an analysis of people who had less sleep and more sleep for practice. And like it was, I think, what, 40%? No, 30%. You're losing 30% of... 30 to 40 percent or something like that of your recall and efficiency just by sleep so you're getting you're going to get 30 percent better just by sleeping well Mm -hmm. like i wish i had those types of margins every practice session you know like (laughs) it's uh it's amazing you know so yeah it's all part of the bigger picture my my music in bed a lot yeah when Same. I was a student Mm -hmm. and then go to bed (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) work on it and then go to bed Uh but 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 yeah you can do it like yeah exactly but also part of just the regular practice session too it's just like all of it helps you know yeah. with a good uh s- good good amount of sleep and movement is so important and movement yeah like i have big issues with my neck it's been like that for my whole life yeah but i i used to think that i needed to stretch everyone's always about stretch 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 yeah but i realized that for myself at least like it's nothing scientific it's <laughs> just my own experience but um 
movement in general, like and getting strength? my heart rate a oh, bit higher. Oh, okay, okay. It makes, I guess, it kind of oxy oxygenates all the the the, the muscles. Oh, know? yeah, for sure. And also strength exercise, not necessarily like super intense, uh, super heavy, but moving those muscles, it makes makes the blood go and it's less stiff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I personally was kind of overstretching and making things worse uh. when I needed to be a bit stronger. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and sometimes yeah. I just do some some bicycle uh, mm -hmm. or some elliptical and my neck's better just because... Yeah you know made the the heart pump a little bit and yeah so movement is is yeah. very important and especially like we're musicians we're using our bodies a lot so we mm. we don't need to be um a athletes you know no. but just at least be moving enough like everyone i guess yeah. but for us because we use we use our, our body our in such a yeah. specific way and we have those static positions and all that yeah so it's wise repetitive yeah. Movements. yeah so it's wise to kind of also keep that healthy balance of of uh outside of the practice room as well yeah that's cool now like okay I, one other thing i was i'm curious about your viewpoint about that is that when do you think it's better to have an allocated amount of time or you know a lot of people they have that oh, some people have this luxury of having unlimited time to practice you know especially when you're you know, when you're starting out not necessarily younger but when you're starting out on your instrument in uh, special predicaments do you think separating just doing a certain amount of time when you're beginning uh instead of just like practicing all day as a beginner you know do you think slow yeah. gradual steps first i don't think practicing all day is realistic okay yeah yeah just physically no no i know yeah yeah, yeah. but i mean like like i think after three hours a day you kind of you're kind of uh maybe not as efficient mm -hmm. and know? then with breaks in between obviously Let's say break you do in like between. a 45 minute three times uh you know but you're talking like somebody who's already kind of well established or do you mean people who start uh, people who are starting out i don't know you're asking the question but yeah i'm just curious like about your who has unlimited amount of time would you still encourage taking as much time throughout the day or like you said said three hours is sort of for, your, for yourself maybe a m brain maximum for for that activity i've practiced like about five hours a day at one point at your peaks yeah but for a beginner, but would you say like? It all depends. All depends. On each person's yeah. situation. That's what I thought. But like usually a beginner, I would say, also because you're not used to holding the flute and all those things, right? And you might have some tension because uh, you're finding your balance and all that. Maybe start with thirty minutes a day, see how you feel, and then you can increase to forty-five and one hour. You know. Or at least 30 minutes, take a break. Or even like when you're a real beginner, sometimes real beginners also get, um, they get, uh, what do you call that? Um, Carpal tunnel? Too much uh, <coughs> oxygen. Oh, oh, too much oxygen. Oh, you know, yeah, they yeah. They breathe in too much <coughs> and then they get uh, lightheaded. Yeah, yeah, lightheaded. I don't know what that means. Hyperventilation. Hyperventilation. Oh, yeah. I never knew that. Like real, real beginners, sometimes they hyperventilate a little bit. Hmm. <laughs> So then maybe, yeah, that's so interesting you say that. Maybe some people get maybe nervous about that when that happens to them and they think they're doing something wrong, but in reality it's just that body getting used to it. they usually, what happens is it, some people think they need more air than they actually do need. Right. So okay. they breathe in a lot because they, they, they don't control it yet how to make a sound with a certain amount of air. They push a lot of air. They take in a lot of air. They hyperventilate like that. Okay. Yeah, my first flute teacher, my first lesson, he told me um, to sit down because once a girl uh, fell on the ground <laughs> on her first lesson. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. And he was like, no, I, her first lesson, it's sitting down, <laughs> sitting on a chair. Because, uh, yeah, he's like, if you're lightheaded, it's normal. It's going to go away when you get it better, you know? Yeah. Because if you breathe, I don't know if you've noticed, but sometimes beginners, they breathe between each note. Yes, so they, they do. It's <laughs> true. Mm -hmm. Between each note, it's way too much oxygen in your brain. And then you, yeah. That's how people have panic attacks, you know, when they breathe in too oh, much. Okay. Yeah. When the breath is too fast, you kind of get lightheaded. Hmm. So, yeah, yeah oh. it all depends. If you're a real, real beginner and you're breathing in between each note, you're going to get tired fast. Mm-hmm. 
But then maybe start working on your breathing so that it's more comfortable. Mm -hmm. like not breathing between every note. Mm -hmm. like start. One other thing, like, it's kind of like, what do you think is the, for people to start when they're starting, do you think the most important thing uh, is like, you know, to just kind of get your fingers where they are or tone or breathing are there some elements that have to be kind of looked at more you sort of were leaning towards like something like that like what's kind of more important when you're first beginning um to kind of focus on in the short term is it basically like trying to hold the flute getting your breathing is it those types of things that people should really look out for at the beginning of uh well, learning when i start usually I, we start just with doing some sounds with the head joint you know okay so like basic embouchure and um and breathing i guess and then we learn how to put the flute together where to put our fingers how to hold it it's a lot of stuff to learn and you kind of have to learn them together but be patient and repeat a lot because <laughs> uh, it's a lot of information at the beginning yeah and it's a type of repetition like and if you are more mindful with your repetition you're only going to benefit more you don't want to do mindless we tend to fall into that sometimes even i do that like mindless repetition instead of mindful intentional repetition you know with intention yeah and but also some things are gonna come with time you know mm -hmm. so it's both you know being okay. mindful but don't stress about it just yeah, 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 totally. some things will just come in time because yeah. you need to be patient sometimes people want the result right away and the muscles have to get you know your body totally. has to learn the whole it's a lot of stuff if yeah. you think about it. <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> yeah. And like we're also, yeah, no, yeah, totally. We're having some questions now. Yeah, I know. And also just like um, if you guys have any thoughts or questions about that, you know, that whole segment we were just talking about, about uh, how to practice and get into a good practice uh, uh, routine in the new year, be sure to let us know in the comments or let us know here in the live chat. But yeah, we have a couple questions and... Um, Amen wants to know, is the flute bad when you have a heart problem? Do you know, did you ever teach anybody with heart problems in the past? Um, I don't know. I don't think so, but. I um, never, yeah. Hmm. I would ask a doctor, but I would be surprised if the flute was bad. Yeah. Because like, uh, of course, like don't exhaust yourself, but. Because it's not like cardio or anything, but it, it's right. good for the lung capacity. Mm -hmm. And I've had a teacher who has heart problems. and Yeah, and uh, still can play. Um, yeah, I think so, but I... I knew I'm one person sure that had one. I'm not sure they still play that much, but yeah. for other reasons. But yeah. Yeah, I right. ask a <laughs> yeah, doctor, yeah, yeah. Cause like, mm -hmm. but I would think that like if you practice, if you play in a like reasonable manner you shouldn't have problems no but i don't want to no no it's not medical or uh, yeah, medical yeah. advice because i'm not qualified at all but if you have yeah i would say if you have that thought maybe check with your doctor first if you have that type of worry and then they'll they'll be the best to reassure you about that but i've never i met some people who've had very abrasive like surgeries and stuff like that like and they were able to play after you know even yeah. if they're medicated and stuff like to a certain degree so because like yeah. i've never felt like my my uh heart was beating more or less when i was playing but i would guess i think it's it's pretty healthy to play totally. the flute, to be honest because like it's really working on your whole yeah. breathing and i had a friend who had a lot of asthma in high school and mm -hmm. well she had a lot of asthma in general but in high school she played the flute every day because we were in a music program and she didn't need any pumps but now that she doesn't play anymore she needs pumps again you know? yeah mm -hmm. so i think it's it's good in general for the whole but yeah. it also depends on the, on the heart problem and all that so i don't want to say yeah yeah totally that's okay so yeah hopefully that helps your question if not it's okay <laughs> well uh so <laughs> something to interesting to that um carmen wants to know uh how did how do you get a clear sound on the flute hers is airy and wants a bit clearer sound that's a uh, one of the most common questions for yeah. sure and there's a uh, there's solutions we have a couple of videos about that yeah if you look she I she follows our videos about clear sound that's yeah. what she says here carmen yeah um it can be different things she says her lips keep opening too big and it sounds airy you, you want me to okay. say okay so no? maybe yeah. uh maybe you need to keep the the sides of your lips closer together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
so you open just in the middle maybe you're right. you're opening too much um the lips in general you need just a tiny hole in the middle but like i would have to like i give general advice but if i saw your embouchure maybe i could assess it even faster better, yeah um yeah maybe you're just not focusing the air in the right spot of the embouchure enough because it's yeah. too big yeah so then maybe look in the mirror keep your lips together mm. and just open a little bit in the middle okay yeah you know some people what they do is they put a grain of rice mm. they close their mm. lips and mm. then they just push the grain of rice out with the air and the and the tongue like Mm -hmm. and like keeping it a bit smaller i think a grain of rice is a bit too small but maybe it can be uh, an exercise you know yeah to feel it where totally. it should be opened totally so that could that could be helping you but yeah check our videos about clear sound because we totally. have a couple and i yeah. think they're pretty good yeah I, I i could add something to that i think also like uh with air and sound that's a whole thing but i think recording yourself kind of going back to that thing record yourself Uh, from your phone or from whatever type of device you have at a different distance so you can hear if there's air at a longer distance then you yeah. can evaluate even more because even my flute sound i can still hear air in the sound because it's my ears are the closest thing to that source of where it is so i always like you can minimize it but to a certain degree you need a little bit of air in yeah your you sound, need a little so bit of air in your sound so that things move but yeah record so maybe what you yeah. think is bad is not as bad as you think yeah because maybe the audience members don't hear it at all that's why the phone can be treated like an audience member yeah. and they're put and it like two three meters away and yeah see. and then try further or yeah. try whatever you can and i think that can really kind of just bring maybe a different perspective of how to approach uh making that sound more clear mm-hmm Because what we hear is different from our ears to where someone is listening a few feet away, you know? There's a lot of physics involved in that for for how it's projected. So that just keep that in, in mind, you know? The phone, uh, your recording device can be a super good helpful tool for that element in particular as well. Yeah, hopefully that helps your question. And if you want to elaborate further, you can write uh, more write more about it in the in the comments for sure. Uh, Mr. Volta wants to know, I love singing combo with the flute, like singing into the flute. I hope uh, you can clarify that. I love it when uh, jazz cats do that in their solos. How would you approach uh, practicing that technique? Oh, singing in the flute technique. Yeah, yeah. Like singing and playing in the flute. Yeah, I think you that's what he means. You could do it with your sound exercises, just uh, totally. going semitone by semitone. Yeah. Going da, da, yeah. And get that sensation. At the same time. Ah. You could do scales and arpeggios with it. Yeah. You know? Or you just sing the melody and then you play it and then you do it together. Right. Yeah, it, it's a good good thing to uh, to do. I think we also have a video about how to sing in your flute. We do, we do. And I, I think, uh, especially if it's for jazz, because a jazz sound for flute and a classical sound for flute, they're different. So, you know, I've played a little bit and so have you. I think, like, there's a little bit of a different type of sound you want to kind of approach with jazz flute in in general. So keep that in mind too i yeah. guess you know so there's maybe, nothing uh, uh, explore you know maybe one last question yeah we'll do one last one and then we'll uh well first we'll actually well, let's uh let's do all of our plugs and then we can answer that question and then yeah. we can uh, finish and the like day uh, congratulations mark for your uh, new flute oh yeah i saw that in the chat that's so cool and also um yeah so that's that's cool so yeah yeah That's so pretty you cool. Say those things yeah, so yeah, we have um, you know, we do the podcast every other month right now. Uh for 2024, we're going to try to do it at least six times of the year and you can go over to our um Patreon where we have uh patreon.com/theflute channel where we have our TFC Unlimited, which is like all of our content including this uh the podcast and just practicing and all of our videos commercial free. You can also just tip us on a monthly basis and you can get uh, a couple uh perks with that, but if you uh Uh, go for our TFC Unlimited, which is, I think, $5 a month. Um, you can uh, watch all of our content there. And we have additional interviews and different types of content that are not on the channel that we're adding to uh, to uh, to that uh, whole entire ecosystem. And that helps us out a lot. And we've had a great response with that already. So if you're considering um, having a s type of a subscription service or something like that, then help, a, you know... Uh, Uh, indie artist or indie however you want to call it <laughs> go and help us out there at the, uh, the patreon.com slash the flute channel 
And then we also have Musigy, which is uh, our store where our Emily's books are, the beginner method, and also the intermediate method, plus also the Telemon album when that comes out in the next couple of weeks. That'll all be there. So you can go to Musigy.com, uh, M-U-S-O-G-Y.com. Uh, what else am I missing? Anything else? I think, I think those are two main avenues. Much it. And also subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the Flute channel over here on YouTube. And uh, consider uh, yeah. also... Uh, and uh, doing that. do we still have space for flute lessons? Do yep, the uh, studio is still open. If you want to have a flute lesson with Emily in the flute studio, we have some openings. So you can e email us at uh, info at thefluechannel.com and we'll be sure to get you uh, squared away with rates and how things work with that. But we do have some openings this year, uh, right now. So if you'd like to have lessons with Emily on a on a whatever type of basis you want, uh, we can make that work. So. And what else? Is that it? I yeah. think, yeah, lessons, all those things. And, uh, yeah, be sure Thank to also you. leave us a comment uh, on the ch on th this video or like it. That helps us out also tremendously. Yeah. Big time. So, um... What was the last uh, question I would like to... Resonance fingerings uh, like clarinet? Um, I don't think we have that on the flute. I've no, never heard of that. No, not necessarily. If, if, if I think I know what it is, I think maybe it might mean, like... Oh, I don't know. I don't yeah. know what it is. So I don't think we have that. We don't have that. And then tips on agility in the lower register, like Midsummer's Night Dream. Oh, yeah. Dum, da, da, um, dum, 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 da, 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 dum, Yeah, dum. I think it's more the low register. Like yeah, da, 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 yeah da, 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 it's in the midpoint somewhere. Yeah, in the midpoint, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that part. You're right. You're right. Sorry. Yeah. Um. So the pro the difficulty with the Midsummer Night Dream is not just that it's in the low register, it's the double tonguing. Mm -hmm. So some. Oh yeah. You know when you um, it's a bit more difficult to tongue fast in the low register because the mm. the reaction is a tiny bit uh, slower. Mm -hmm. So, um, first I would start practicing that all slurred. Mm -hmm. Then I would do slurred by two slurred and four detached so the first time i would go tam ta ha 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 ta ha 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 ta ha ha ta one tonguing per measure right then you tongue the first two of the measure and you uh, and then you slur the first two and you tongue the rest so it goes ta ta ha ta ka ta ka 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 ta and then you practice ta ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta but i would also practice uh upside down going ka ta ka ta ka ta oh yeah uh, you you um Invert switch the, the time the, the articulation ka. yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> then it's so much easier when you do it in this in the right way oh yeah huh. yeah um if you find it difficult maybe watch our video about playing in the low register mm -hmm. um we should do just practicing about that i don't know if we ever did I one about orchestra it was a grouped a one, video, orchestra excerpts. We did a just practicing of orchestral excerpts, and I think Midsummer's Night Dreams is in it. Yeah, if it's not, maybe we do it again. <laughs> we just do it no matter, like, yeah. Yeah, maybe it's I can there, make a, a specific video about yeah. it. Yeah. Because it's, uh, it's a good one. Yeah. And, like, make sure that you're... Sometimes in the low register, people tend to lower their head. Oh, and then yeah. Then it changes the whole... Totally. Um, the whole... Sorry. Um, it's okay. <laughs> it changes the the angle of the air. So make sure you keep your head straight, that you're not changing your position when you go in the low register. And um, blow warm air, not cold air, like warm and slow air. And uh, look at yourself in the mirror and check if you can see that you're tonguing. If you can see that you're tonguing, that you're moving too much, you know? Oh, that's a you that's you an incredible see, tip. Wow. You shouldn't that's see so good. your lips moving or anything moving when you're mm. doing it. It's like... Right. Oh, it's you a great see nothing's thing. moving. Nothing. You don't see it. If it moves, then it's going to disturb the airstream. Right. It's going to... If your lips are moving, it's going to disturb the air. Oh. You just want to have a... You want to have an airstream that's going room on the flute mm -hmm. right in the right spot and your tongue is just cutting that airstream and yeah. that's it but yeah. you don't want to sometimes we work way too hard oh you yeah know, to oh and yeah. then you, you we move on each note to f no just yeah. stability will help you a lot totally. i i always had this one tip that i got from that particular 
um, excerpt and I it might be completely but it always worked for me and it made my articulations better for that is to play it up a key and down a key oh yeah yeah Tr- so like you transpose you it. transpose them and then you play then you get that mentality of like playing a little higher but then keeping that when you go reset and go back to that and you have this more brighter more deeper yeah that approach. can be difficult if someone <coughs> doesn't have the it's just the, an advanced tech it's just yeah, a, it's just an advanced yeah knowledge to do it i'm just saying it's an advanced technique because if you're doing that piece and doing it for excerpt for um auditions or you know even just student auditions and stuff like that i don't know i think it's a it's a it's a higher 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 um technique type of tip but mm-hmm. it worked and it was crazy that's just one key up one key down and i like something fixed with that whole because i know that problem i've had that problem too you know that really making those low notes punch not punch but give sustenance you know and the way you were saying with the the tonguing and looking in the mirror those are excellent i don't think it needs to punch that much though because no not like super piano, punch that, yeah that whole thing is piano and if you try to, if you think too much punch you're gonna want to play louder maybe i don't mean and punch you're so gonna much have an issue with breathing as well because there's not much space to breathe so uh. i would say try to keep it soft because you won't be able to get to the part where you can actually take a breath you're right yeah maybe i'm not meaning punch but more like more like actually just be able to play them <laughs> sometimes yeah. you run out of air like you were saying the for one of the first things was the air yeah you have to take a huge yeah. breath before you start yeah huge breath you know so yeah, yeah. hopefully that helps and not not give all your air in the oh, first yeah. three measures no no yeah or if the first three notes <laughs> sometimes yeah. i remember when i first started i was like already out of breath by the first bar i'm like oh there's like 15 more bars <laughs> i'm like oh yeah you know but it's a uh, that's a very interesting question you know so hopefully yeah. that helped um, I like that excerpt a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's a very good excerpt. I like talking about that and uh, playing it. It's pretty fun. I think there's even a duet version of it that's very good. Yeah, uh, there is. Somewhere. I played it with my, my high school teacher. He was so cool. We played it together. Oh, that's so cool. That must be fun, yeah. yeah. I th- he liked doing a little sight reading sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe we'll do another just sight reading. <laughs> that's fun. We that did Wally fun. One. That was fun. People, th- I think people like that. Yeah, maybe we'll do yeah. a just practicing, but a just sight reading again. Maybe people were sending stuff for me to sight read. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, cool. that was kind of cool. You can guys can send us stuff Just to Cyrene. Make sure I take my tea before. Oh yeah, exactly, sharp. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be super sharp. That's it. <laughs> so yeah, thanks everybody. I, this was a great uh, 2023 for us. So it was everybody was great. We had a lot of more new people uh, joining the channel. So many nice people. So many great comments everywhere. Um, and uh, we're thankful for all of you. And uh, hopefully you guys have great musical journeys in 2024 and we'll have a a new video out in uh january and then we'll also have a just practicing and then another flute talk podcast at the end of february last sunday of every every other month rather and uh go and subscribe to us on apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts if you do have apple Podcasts, it'd be great if you left a review about our podcast it really helps too uh us in that in the educational podcast uh, music sector it helps us go a long way with that too we've had some uh, reviewers uh, leave some reviews which are really great and maybe we'll read some next uh, next time yeah so yeah and yeah. yeah we're very grateful for you like listening to us and totally buying our books and uh, just and uh, watching our videos our stuff yeah and watching our videos and sharing with your friends about uh, our tips and everything because uh, we're doing that for you guys and totally we appreciate that uh yeah it's a whole whole community whole family yeah, whole ecosystem whole circle, <laughs> of, uh, circle of uh, yeah yeah life <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> so yeah thanks everybody uh be sure to leave a comment and uh, like the video and um, if you have any questions anything at all just uh, leave them anywhere on any of our videos we'll be sure to read them and hopefully answer them too so yeah Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great New Year's Eve. Yeah, and a nice 2024 year. Yes. (laughs) See you.